So now it is time to wake up and time to get up. So get up and wake up. Or oh, wake up and get up. But get Good morning. We're going on a hike today. Bunch of wildfires right now burning throughout Alaska. Uh, it's cleared up a little bit, but still pretty smoky. But I'm feeling it in my legs and my quads and stuff. My butt. <laughs> I'm gonna have a pretty nice butt. Anybody out there like nice butts? Because I'm gonna have a nice one after this. Here, bear. Bear, bear, bear. And any bears, any bears. Last chance for bears. That's where we're going. Bear, hey bear, hey moosey. Doesn't really matter what animal you say. You can say here bear, or here moosey, or here artichoke. Well, it's not an animal. Armadillo is what I meant to say. Doesn't matter what animal you say, as long as a bear hears you. But right up there, not that peak jutting out, just below it. That's where I saw a bear one time. That's right where I'm going. Hope he's moved on in the four or five years since I last saw him. Worst job I ever had. I worked on a banana farm in Australia. I went there to work uh, at a winery, but I went there a little early just to travel around a little bit and then I noticed I was running out of money because it's damn expensive to live in Australia. Alcohol is expensive, food's expensive. You can see my priorities, right? <laughs> food's expensive, but it's really alcohol that gets you. So I went up to Queensland, North Queensland, the Australian tropics. This was January. Of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, the seasons are reversed to the Northern Hemisphere. So. January in the Southern Hemisphere is like July or August here in the Northern Hemisphere. So you can imagine being in the Australian tropics in the middle of summer was miserable enough. So I worked on a banana farm. It's called Humping Bananas. You'd work with a cutter, somebody carrying a machete, and you had your cutter. So your cutter would go up, identify the tree that he was going to cut and you would go up to that tree, stand underneath a cluster of bananas and the cutter would take a big hit at it with his machete and that would cause the cluster of bananas weighing, weighing you know, 50, 60, 70 kilos to fall on your shoulder. And then once you were in position, once you were in a good athletic position and it was secure on your shoulder, then the cutter would take the second cut and that would separate it from the tree and then you were carrying the entire burden. So what you would do then is uh, as, as gracefully as possible with a huge cluster of bananas on your shoulder, walk back to the row where the tractor was and there was a big trailer open on both sides and you would carry it and then just kind of ease it onto the trailer. Some clusters were bigger than others. There were snakes, spiders, and so you just did the best you could. And I got so dirty, but it wasn't from chemicals, which was nice. It was just dirt and mud, sweat. I threw away all my clothes and started over after that. I remember when I was a little kid, I went up to the farm on my mom's side of the family with uh, my aunt Shirley. Uh, we stayed at my grandma's house, like where Shirley and my mom and 
our siblings all grew up, we went to some kind of estate sale. And I was a little kid, so I had a sweet tooth. And I don't remember much about that weekend. I just remember going into some relative's house and it smelled like coffee and old lady perfume. And everyone got coffee except a little kid, so I was thirsty. I didn't notice how thirsty I was at first because there was a bowl of lemon drop candy right in the middle of the table. And so I sat down. I just started plopping them in my mouth. You have never seen a human being chew lemon drops faster than I was chewing them. Just throwing them in there. So, uh, you know, a little boy, a little bladder. I still have a little bladder actually, but I had a really little one then probably. So I said to one of the old ladies, old lady, I need to go pee. Do you have a, a, an old tin of Cafe Bustello? And she said, no. I was like, so then I said, well, do you have a toilet? She said, down there to the left. Make sure you sit down when you use it. I don't want any sprinkling. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> she was probably thinking it though. I don't know if I was standing up peeing back then anyway. I don't know when you start standing up and peeing but I've been doing it for a while. I keep putting my jacket on and taking it off. Well, anyway, so I went pee, came back, sat down, was about to reach for my next lemon drop, but there were no more lemon drops and there was no more bowl. And I looked around to all the ladies, including my aunt Shirley, but I was trying to be really secretive and I'm sure they all knew that I was looking for him. But you know, in my six year old way or however old I was, I was just like, thinking I was being really discreet. So I said to the same old lady who told me not to sprinkle, oh lady, I'm thirsty. So she didn't ask like what I would like to drink. <laughs> she went to the freezer and she got one of those uh, concentrate, you know, those those cylindrical frozen orange juice concentrate, things that stay in the freezer and then you pour it into a pitcher and mix it with water and it makes orange juice. Concentrated orange juice, but it's frozen. Grabbed a can opener and opened it. Where's the trail go here? Too busy yakking away, I almost lost the trail. It's right here. And it's really steep. At least I'll be recording myself if I fall down the mountain. And she grabbed it, slammed it down the table, said, drink it. Well, I thought that was pretty rude. Didn't even dilute it with water. Just had to wait for it to thaw. But she made a mistake because when she went to the freezer, she opened the freezer and I saw sticking out just above the freezer was the bowl of lemon drops. My grandma died about 15 years ago now. My aunt Shirley died just a couple years after the lemon drop incident. A week before Christmas, she was was killed in a plane crash. Almost there. That's the castle. My phone battery is about to die. Whew, that's cold. Hi. Well, this is where I leave you. You can just wait here. I only brought one beer and it's coming with me to the top.
Well, that was a grueling day. That was like six or seven hours up and down a mountain in the sun and the wind. You know, I was talking about my time working on a banana farm in Australia, and I kind of feel like that right now, like kind of sore, kind of tired, but I know tomorrow and the next day and the day after that, I'll be very sore and very tired, but I'm glad you tagged along for the hike today, and well, I guess I'll see you in the world. Good night. <laughs> Where I know I'll be sore tomorrow and the next day, and maybe. Ah, oh, fuck.